Now available in paperback and e-readers, John Haynes, 1987. Learn lessons about life and teenage love in the 1980s in this coming-of-age John Haynes story. Get your copy of John Haynes, 1987 in paperback and e-readers at Amazon.com and online booksellers everywhere. Last week, we lost another black statesman of the 20th century, Jim Brown. Now, Jim Brown will always be remembered for his work in sports and entertainment, but what I will remember him for is all of the great work that he did to empower black people. Now, Jim Brown was a major part of the legendary teams of the Cleveland Browns, and after playing for the NFL, he went on to have a long and storied acting career. However, as he was working on the football field and in entertainment, he never forgot the brothers and sisters in the community and worked tirelessly behind the scenes to empower black people and improve the quality of life for brothers and sisters. Now, Jim Brown was a legendary athlete who had a storied career in college football, college basketball, and lacrosse. And he played lacrosse so well that they basically looked to change rules as related to the game. And as Jim Brown expelled at that sport, he went on to go on to have a legendary career in both football and basketball. And this is why he was basically drafted into the NFL where he had an incredibly storied career. Now, as Jim Brown was building towards that storied career in the NFL, he had to encounter racism on the college sports fields. And as he um, ran into that racism, he stood up for himself by speaking out against these racists as far back as the 1950s and was a major part of the civil rights movement because Jim Brown was active in the civil rights movement as far back as the 1950s and began speaking out on racial issues, standing up to represent black people and standing up to represent black people to empower them. Now, as Jim Brown went on to again have his storied um, college career, he was eventually drafted by the Cleveland Browns in, in the 1950s. And as he was drafted into the um, Cleveland Browns in the 1950s, he was a leading rush, rushing yards leader and was a leading touchdown leader over the nine years of his career. And in that storied career at on the Cleveland Browns, Jim Brown was a popular player, and as a popular player, he was a part of the 1964 NFL championship team and, and was a, a part of a couple of teams that were part of the uh, that were runners up as related to that championship. So Jim Brown had a again storied career where his legendary number 32 was retired after he decided to end his football career early, even though he was still at peak health in nine years into his NFL career, Jim Brown decided to retire after getting an acting gig in the movie The Dirty Dozen. Now, as he was acting in the movie The Dirty Dozen, he was at odds with then Cleveland Browns owner Art Modell, and he just decided to retire from the NFL and go on to go out here and just do acting. And as he did acting, he basically had a major impact on acting for black people because back in the 1950s and 1960s, there were not many black men who were presented in a positive light. And many people um, describe Jim Brown as a black Superman or a black John Wayne for his strong black masculine presence, and due to that strong black masculine presence, he was able to expand the range of roles that were available to black actors at the time, because the roles that were available to black actors at the time were usually just minor supporting roles, such as butlers, 
or slaves or just beat guys in the background. But with Jim Brown, we got to see a man who was a prominent leader. And that prominent leader was somebody who changed the image of black men, changed the image of black masculinity. And as he changed the image of black manhood and black masculinity, this led to people seeing black men as lead as capable of handling a leading role because this created it where a black man could be seen as somebody who could not only carry a movie but could go out here and open a movie at the box office so Jim Brown basically opened the door for actors like Sidney Poitier actors like Denzel Washington and Will Smith I mean Jim Brown while people say he wasn't the greatest actor the whole thing is he opened the door for brothers and sisters out there and opened the door for black men to go out here and lead movies. Now, Jim Brown's first movie was where he played a Buffalo soldier in a movie called Rio Conchos. And again, the movie was critically panned, but the whole thing was Jim Brown did, that movie did open the door for black people. And then he starred in The Dirty Dozen. And again, this is the movie he had an issue with Art Modell over that led to the end of his football career because this is where Jim Brown realized he could make more money doing acting and then not have to get put his health and safety at risk. So Jim Brown then went on to star in movies like The Split, where he was paid $125 for the role, also starred in Riot, and was started to become the first action star. He also starred in the 1968 film Ice Station Zebra, and then went on to star in one of his signature roles, 100 Rifles, and in the film 100 Rifles, this is where Jim Brown was one, was in one of the world's first interracial love scenes between a black man and a Hispanic woman, because Raquel Welch wasn't white, she was Hispanic, and this was the first interracial scene in a Hollywood movie, and this was the film that basically was um, the thing that, re that basically defined the black male masculine image, and this film basically um, was one that just basically was an iconic role for Jim Brown and took his career to the next level. And again, Jim Brown had a long career in television, also starring in shows like Knight Rider and, uh, and shows like Chips, and also appeared in movies in the 80s like I'm Gonna Get You Sucka, which was a film made by Keenan Ivory Wayans, and also starred in a fun role in The Running Man playing Fireball, and also starred in other movies like Morris Attacks, and even though he had a long career in Hollywood with multiple roles, he still was out here looking to empower black people. And Jim Brown was out here looking to empower black people behind the scenes as he was out here creating an organization to help promote economic opportunities for black-owned businesses called the Black Economic Union. Now, he founded this organization back in 1966, the Black Economic Union, and he formed this organization because he wanted to economically empower black people because, in his opinion, he said that we've got to stop wasting all our energy and our money marching and picketing and going to things like camping down in Washington on a poor people's campaign. And he said, we've got to get out of this emotional stuff and do something that will bring real change. And this is why he was working towards building black-owned businesses and creating this black economic union to create black-owned businesses because he thought that black-owned businesses would go out here and empower black people because when you have your own economic base you can have a base for your pe for your people to be employed and not have to deal with being a second class person as related to their own community that's one of the things i liked about jim brown was he focused on black empowerment way back in the 60s and was not interested in just going out here to march and protest no, he was looking to go out here and build a, play, a institution that would empower black people by providing them with tangibles as related to jobs and tangibles as related to economic empowerment. And this is what's something that he did because, again, he loved black people and he wanted black people to be able to gain economic and political power. 
And this is something that led to him basically becoming targeted by the FBI. Now, Jim Brown had been targeted by the FBI because he was focused on developing uh, black empowerment. And that whole focus on standing up for civil rights and standing up for black empowerment was one of the reasons why he was watched by them, in addition to his work as related to trying to create a truce between the gangs in Los Angeles and he also worked um, to go out here and teach those gang members and prisoners by teaching them life skills and, and teach, trying to prevent them from being a part of violence as part of his American Foundation. So Jim Brown was actively again working behind the scenes through from the civil rights movement in the 50s and was one of those athletes who, again, even as he was in the 50s, still fighting for black people. And as he was fighting for black people, he was out here looking to economically empower black people. And he was even looking to go out here and stand up for Muhammad Ali, the late boxer, even as he was dealing with his struggles with the government as they tried to draft him for the Vietnam War. Now, as the, Viet as the government tried to draft Muhammad Ali for the Vietnam War, Muhammad Ali had to give up his belt and was being turned into a pariah by the mainstream media. But Jim Brown, alongside Bill Russell, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and, and Carl Stokes, then had a meeting with, Jim, with, with um, Muhammad Ali called the Cleveland Summit, where they rallied behind Muhammad Ali as related to him being ostracized by American society for refusing to stand and be a part of a draft into the Vietnam War, which was dis which was well, a campaign that was dis was disproportionately drafting black men into a war that we had nothing to do with. Again, this whole campaign was meant to demonize Muhammad Ali, and instead of just going along to get along, Jim Brown went out here and actively stood up for Muhammad Ali, looking to stand to protect a black man and, a, and try to protect that black man from being railroaded by America's criminal justice system and its entire media system. Jim Brown stood up like a man for another black man who wanted to stand up for his rights, and that's what makes him a truly great man of character because the Vietnam War was again a war that was waged on black men to try to thin out black men's ranks in society, sending them on a road to wars where they would wind up dead and a large portion of black men wound up dead. But Jim Brown stood up for Muhammad Ali and again that's one of the things I can respect him for and I can respect him for all of the great work that he did for black people as he was out here um, not only helping to try to build a better quality of life for the black community, but he was also going out here and again acting and playing football, but he never forgot black people and he never forgot the black people and their quality of life. And again, this is what one of the things that will be remembered for Jim Brown's great legacy. Now, Jim Brown was married to two black women and as he was married to two black women, he had multiple children, and those children would go on to build his legacy. Now, as he was out here building his legacy, he had been arrested, sadly, multiple times for assault, and the mainstream media would want to try to focus on these alleged assaults to try to demonize Jim Brown as a black brute. Now, this went on as related to a 1965 charge, as related to a 18-year-old woman named Brenda Ayers, but he was cleared of those charges, and a year later, he fought paternity allegations against the same woman who said that she fathered her child, but that was not substantiated. Now, in 1968, he was also charged with intent to commit murder after it. Model Evan Bon Chen was found beneath the balcony of his second-floor apartment, but those charges were dismissed when she refused to cooperate with the prosecutor's office and was ordered to pay a $300 fine. And they, they, what Jim Brown alleges is that Bon Chin was angry and jealous that he had been having an affair with Gloria Steinem. And again, this is a very troubling incident because you got Jim Brown mixing and swirling it up as he was out here with a black wife. Now, 
1970, he was also arrested for assault and battery for a road rage incident that occurred in 1969. And again, he was in 1975, he had been convicted of um, a t um, beating and choking a golfing partner. And then there was a charge where somebody tried to say he violated a 33-year-old woman, but that charge was dismissed. And in 1999, he had a domestic violence incident. And this is the um, one with against his wife for hitting her car with a shovel. But he says that that was because he had an argument with his wife during her um, menstrual period. And again, that was one where he was, again, these incidents, again, there's no real um, thing. But again, the media will go out here and try to use this to dirty up Jim Brown. Because under white supremacy, anybody black... When they're out here, they need to make sure that they leave with an asterisk next to their name, but that asterisk really does not um, impact any of the great work that Jim Brown has done, and it doesn't impact it because, again, Jim Brown was a man of great character, a man who stood up for black people, a man who stood up for black people's rights, a man who looked to support and build in the black community because there aren't that many people who are out here looking to build in the black community. Many of today's athletes, when they get their money, they go out here and get themselves a white woman. But Jim Brown came back to the black community. And as he came back to the black community, what happened was is that he tried to make a major impact. And that impact will always be remembered as related to his legacy. So I, I'm really sad to have missed um, I'm, I'm to have heard about the passing of Jim Brown, and I wish I could have made a video earlier, but I wanted to make sure I got all of the facts, because the mainstream media has made an effort to demonize Jim Brown, but I want to make sure to present the facts as related to Jim Brown and his great legacy, and I'm sad to hear about his passing, and I'm sad that I hadn't made a video earlier, but I just, um, I'm, I wish condolences to his family, and I wish that this great st statesman would rest in power. Now, if you want to pick up some of my positive black fiction on the SJS Direct imprint, like the Isis series, the e Steam series, the John Haynes series, and the books of the Smith's Gorilla Trilogy, and my other books like the Thetas, Eternal Night, and A Recipe for Success, along with my men's issues books and books like The Man Crisis and The Woman Crisis, you can find those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find those books at other online booksellers like Smashwords, the iBook Store, and Google Play. And if you want to see me make more videos about icons like Jim Brown and things going on in the black community, you can send a donation to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, e steam horror of a hyena woman. Elle's aspiring angel takes on a wicked werewoman in this action-packed all-new e steam series adventure. Get e steam horror of a hyena woman in paperback and e-readers today. Support black-owned and black-operated digital broadcast media. www.niceradionetwork.com Nice Radio Network broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.